everybody. Let's get everybody here. All right, great. So today we are covering broad or death. Basically, the real history of Facebook, your Facebook features, of your Facebook ads feature. Um, we're covering in the big three changes that you've had. Why that we've had over the last 10 years, why OCPM changed the world, the real market impact around everything with actual real dollars and cents. Let's get down to the hardcore data of what has been done, what the effect was, and what the future is going to look like. And the biggest thing here that we really need to focus in on is why you should stop listening to people that are preaching something that opposes Facebook's business objectives because the impact of rejecting being a good partner what it has had on the previous players to the last few times. And to be fair, this wasn't just Facebook. And we'll get into how this also happened on Google several times before that. We're getting into a whole bunch of things. I'm super excited. Please do not be shy. Comment, reply, do whatever you want to do. Let's get into this conversation. This is going to be fun. Ultimately, broad or death, the future, the real history of your Facebook ads future. Let's dive into it right now. So number one, Let's cover a couple things. Number, we are in the third purge of the last 10 years on Facebook ads. And what I mean by that more than anything is the third most, the third biggest fundamental shift in how the platform works. Now, one of the biggest lessons that we have from the past is that resisting this change is a giant liability to your success. And those that embrace that change see a massive, massive boost in their business. And this isn't just like big businesses here or small businesses there. This is the democratization of the platform and what was set Facebook aside from all of the players and why it is one of, if not the biggest opportunity that you have as an advertiser right now. So the first one that we're getting into, let's just get down to the bottom line of dollars and cents, the market share. Let's get down to what is the actual impact of these changes? So the very first one that we're going to cover today is the implementation of the Facebook Pixel. Back in the day, you used to have a Pixel for every audience event that you wanted to cover. You had a Pixel event for every conversion event you wanted to do. There was a development request that it might take days or weeks to get an actual site set up for a Facebook Pixel. Now, what happened in 2015 is we Facebook deprecated that. They got rid of it. Now, the impact of that was within two years, we had 175% lift in the amount of money being spent on Facebook ads. Now, at the time, this was an end of days move, and we'll got, dive more into it. The second big purge that we saw inside of Facebook was the implementation of the Power 5 and CBO, dynamic ads, and, uh, adv you know, advanced matching, and, and, and CBO, of course, and all of these other things. Um, dynamic creative and DPA and all, all of these other all of these other great opportunities. Um, again, end of days, stupid thing, waste of your time, all sorts of stuff. While well, the folks that embrace it help push Facebook forward another 150 to 160 percent in market share. And this is just the United States. Like we're talking between 2015 and in two years, 2017, we grew from 1.6 billion dollars a year in spend to over 3.7 billion dollars a year just in the amount of money being spent on Facebook ads. In the big shift that happened in 2018, we saw a rise from 7.8 billion dollars a year in Facebook ads to nearly 12 billion dollars a year in Facebook ads. And this is a democratization too because how many folks do you know got into Facebook ads in 2018, in 2019? Because what the dynamic world brought to us with conversion campaigns and with CBO and with an optimized CPM environment, what that allowed folks to do was be so successful. We, we saw millionaires being made left, right, and center. So many small businesses, the world of direct to consumer advertising, in, in my experience, was something that was only available to a select few is now something that was available to everyone. And we saw successes happening for people all over the world. I talked to folks from Constantly from Honduras to India and the United Kingdom to Dubai and South Africa to Colombia and United States and Canada and Mexico. Every country in the world, I, people in Australia, every country in the world saw this great opportunity to be successful because of the opportunities that were brought forward by the things that ultimately scared the folks that thought they knew what they were doing and challenged what people were doing even with 
what they had figured out. And ultimately the folks that responded to that, that embraced that saw massive success. The folks that didn't, they died. And let's get into the first one here. The Facebook pixel and conversion campaigns. And, and by the way, the reason I'm getting so heavy into this is because you're seeing courses by folks like Andrew Foxwell and Common Thread Collective and, and the founder group from Nick Shackelford and all of these other things. And you have to understand that what they're teaching is at best a reaction to what worked for them two or three years ago and directly opposes things that they teach in other places because they don't know how to succeed forward because they're not the ones actually doing the work. At best, what they are doing is reciting information on isolated use cases to try to give you a copy and paste solution for your business, but your business isn't like anybody else's. Your clients aren't like other people. The solution moving forward is never a copy and paste one. The solution moving forward is always how to understand the system and process for you to be successful. And if you don't have a system and a process to repeat success at scale and get incrementally better over time while being a good business partner to your vendors, then you are going to die. And there's a reason why people preach fear and then sell short-term solutions because that's a hell of a better business model than teaching people how to fish, especially if you don't know how to do things because you are a manager of teams of teams and you don't actually know what the fuck you're talking about, which is what most of these people that were super successful between 2015 and 2018 who rise through the ranks on, um, you know, inside of direct to consumer and Facebook ads, they got so good at things or they were attached to brands that didn't even necessarily need them to be successful that they are now regarded as very, you know, well-respected and, 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 and uh, you know, very strong individuals that are in the place. But the honest truth is the majority of the advice they have is a liability to your success and happiness. And if you continue to follow their advice down into the pit of death that we are going to lay out, then you are ultimately going to either have to fire people, cancel vacations, miss family, or close up shop entirely. And that is a facet of either you can adopt the future or you can fight it. And if you fight it, you are going to die. Let's back that with data right here. The first big purge that we had was the Facebook pixel and conversion campaigns. Now, before that, you had, like I said, a pixel event for every all, all your audiences, all your conversion events. It took days or weeks to code all of the uh, Facebook pixels and audiences that you might need for any specific campaign. And this was done because that's how Google worked. And Facebook was directly designed to compete with Google as a CPC platform. And there were folks who insisted on using it as a brand awareness play, as an engagement play, and as a CPC platform. And believe me, I was hitting seven figures a day, wildly successfully, mind you, with brands who probably didn't need me and were running purely CPC platform. That's how Facebook functioned. That's where interest groups come from because it was a way of competing with affinity audiences. It also hasn't seen any development since then. So when you're talking about, well, I'm gonna use an interest group, what you're using is tech that is over six years old that Facebook has wanted you to abandon since 2015. That's fine. We were not, today's not the day to get into that, but we will get into other things. So now this with the best practice beforehand was treating Facebook as a CPC platform. And we had all of these events and brands and advertisers work really hard in developing these really complex architectures because that's what worked for them on display and on uh, broadcast and on email and on search because that's what they understood. They didn't know that that's not how the platform was supposed to be designed. And honestly, Facebook didn't really know either. They just knew that they had an opportunity to change the way that things were presented and in presenting that change, they were able to disrupt the marketplace and provide an opportunity that nobody else had because Facebook had access to data that nobody else had. They had the Facebook Pixel event on, they had Facebook Pixels on millions of websites and were able to control user experiences on multiple devices. This is the implementation of the Edge Rank system where you no longer saw all of your content in chronological order. You had a curated feed of things that were working well for you. Right. And this was in ultimately in response to Google saying that your results are going to look different than somebody else's because of your browser history, because of your search history. That's why when you Google something somebody else's, you're going to see different things based on what's going to respond well to you. That's why when you go into Instagram and I go into Instagram, even if we were to swipe and follow the exact same people, we're going to see different user experiences because Facebook is controlling for that. Whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, or things across the audience network, Facebook had access to this user experience data that nobody else did. And their business model at that time was to maximize user 
time on site and the quality of that experience. And if that is not at the forefront of your strategy, if you are still trying to say, I like this ad, I'm going to force it on as many people as I possibly can, you are fighting a losing battle that directly competes with the business objectives of your business partner, and you are ultimately going to lose. And what do we see from this? Estimated action rates plummet, so your CPMs skyrocket. Your page score falls. If you're seeing a CBM of 30, 40, 50, $100, there's a reason why other people that are respecting Facebook's business model and their bottom line are seeing CPMs in the $8, $15, $20 range. I'm working with folks and myself where we might be spending a million dollars a month and our CPCs, are, our CPMs are like less than 20 bucks because we're prioritizing the relationship with our partner and our customer experience because that's what Facebook told us that they wanted. Now, the impact of this new pixel versus the old pixel, the biggest change was you now only need to install one pixel on your site. And this allowed for an optimized CPM environment, the OCPM, this thing where Facebook is able to say, this is the customer experience. This is going to make the users happy. This is going to keep people on our platform. And ultimately, this is going to be something that gets gets the amount of time on site for our users to maintain high because Facebook ultimately has one business model, selling attention for profit. And if you are a liability to that business model, ultimately you present a liability to their success and they're going to charge you a tax because you are a low integrity partner. And if you try to run your business as a low integrity partner to your business partners, you are going to fail at business. That is a fundamental truth. You cannot be successful when the people that you require to work well and that you need to treat you well start to shit on you because you are a bad person partner to them. If your inventory goes up and the quality of customers you have goes down, if the cost of doing business continues to increase, then you will ultimately not be able to run your business. That's just a unit economics decision. And there's not a single reason why an audience is going to fix that problem. And why anybody who says, well, honestly, we just need the right lookalike audiences and cost cap. They're preaching to you something that will ultimately kill your business. And we're going to get more into that in a minute. So the optimized CPM environment allowed Facebook to control user experiences and ultimately try to deliver conversion events, which was not a thing that we could do before. Now, many people embrace this, but some did some did not like it. They felt it was more difficult to track specific conversions. They had found a way of business that worked for them. And instead of being uncomfortable and growing, they decided to be scared and hold on to things that used to work for them. And as a result, many, many of those agencies and those performance marketing divisions died. I was a, at the time that this came out, I was a supervisor at Omnicom for the performance marketing division called Resolution Media. And I was overseeing CBS and Nissan working with the Levi's team and the Activision team. And we got so much business from so many other agencies that refused to take Facebook as a performance marketing platform prioritized in the user experience. And one of the reasons that I was a supervisor there, and one of the reasons that I was getting million dollar daily spends was because very early on, I saw the change and I was, I mean, look, I, I, I put my, you know, I, I put my foot out there and I just happened to be right. I could have easily been wrong. But I, I, I read the tea leaves in the right way. And I said, look, what Facebook wants, because I listened to what their business told us when they invited us to Menlo Park and sat us down and said, this is what we want for the next five years. They were very explicit. We want people to spend time on the platform and to be happy with it and to have a positive user experience so that we can keep them on the platform for longer and we can grow our user base. That's their business model. If your ads are a liability to that business model, then it's going to cost you more and more money and you are going to see less and less success on the platform. And the folks that rejected that ultimately were unable to continue doing business. There were multiple agencies that specifically existed just to do like low funnel retargeting and traffic. And those folks died on the vine. There were agencies and, and solutions that you used to be able to pay when, when Facebook first allowed these other options. You used to be able to pay Oracle or, or Data Logics or other sources to get audiences into your platform. And you could see right up like this. OK, I'm going to bring in this thing and they're going to pay. I'm going to pay them 35 cents, 50 cents, 80 cents on my as a tax on my cpm and that's how facebook works when you add in targeting it costs you extra facebook just because that price is dynamic they now just don't show it to you but every time you add an audience what you're doing is you're saying i want to show this ad to fewer people that are likely to see it and i want to pay extra to do that 
Very rarely is that actually a good idea. And that is was deprecated around 2015 with the implementation of the OCPM environment. But people still to this day insist that it works well for them because instead of learning what they were supposed to do, they've been trying to train them, the cells and the platform to ultimately rely on this micromanagement to see success. That is an unsustainable business model. That is the reason why ad accounts get shut down. That is the reason that CPMs are 20, 50, $100 when they don't need to be more than 10 or 15. And that is the reason why people are ultimately saying Facebook is unreliable, it's unstable, it's unscalable, I can't trust it, and I'm gonna do 10 other things. And that's the reason that those folks are firing people and might be going out of business, whereas other folks are continuing to see scale in their business success. Now, what we saw out of all of this was ultimately the people that embraced the OCPM environment were the folks between 2015 and 2018 that became very well-established personalities, very well-established, uh, historically important individuals. And that's where you get, you know, your Taylor Holidays and your Andrew Foxwells and your Max Fins and your Depeche and all of these individuals because they were around at the time and they embraced that change because they had to and because it was the right move. The problem is they got so successful at that point in time that they stopped evolving. They figured, well, I understand how this works, even though the platform made two changes since then and they've rejected those things because it's a lot easier to say, I have a thing that worked in isolation. I'm going to show you the every single step of the one win that I have, ignore the 99 losses, and I'm not gonna teach you how to problem solve and give you the systems and process so that you can ultimately create your own change. I'm not gonna teach you how to fish. I'm gonna give you one out of context data point, and then I'm going to shrink wrap that and sell it to you without support. And I'm gonna do that every couple of months, every couple of years, and then, Folks like, for instance, Andrew Foxwell did this whole series where he interviewed a whole bunch of these low integrity players who honestly might not even appreciate the fact that they are low integrity players because they are attached to brands that don't need them and they have a longevity in this. But if you're a manager of teams of teams, there's no fucking way that you can actually know what's going on at the root level because you shouldn't know because your job is to run a business, not to actually do the work, which is why I don't fucking trust you when you tell me what you should do. You know, Tim Cook is not the person you should go to when your iPhone breaks. You need to go to somebody that actually does the work. You know, that is, you don't, you don't talk to the head of the company to understand the execution of the entry-level employee. That is just not what you're supposed to do. And so anytime any of these people have these great round table where they're all talking to each other, what they're doing is a whole bunch of people that don't know what they're fucking talking about, that got good years ago, are discussing solutions that they don't understand, the problems that they're creating that ultimately reject or come directly compete with the business objectives of their partner. Because the solution here has been laid out since the second phase of what we were supposed to do. And that's what the Disruptor Group brought in. And, and I was a very proud member of, of that group. And if you want to know more of the Disruptor Group Summit that I'm about the site, go and look at Build to Break. This happened in Menlo Park in 2017, 2018. The case studies in 2017 and the meeting was in 2018. And the folks there were the best advertisers in the in on the platform that defined how you're supposed to do things and we tested a million different things a lot of them you'll never see because they're complete dog shit and a lot of them some of you may remember like canvas ads or something that were a big deal or instant experiences and all this fun stuff they've ultimately been deprecated but this is where we get dynamic creative from this is where we get power five from this is where we get the cbo and advanced matching and dpa ads i was in the beta for the dpa ads i remember working on the Macy's account where we had to pay an Australian ad agency $50,000 just to make an Excel spreadsheet so that we could upload every single product that Macy's had so we can run this kind of weird carousel ad and see if that worked. And now it's an industry standard. So the power five, this was implemented in 2018. Now the people today that are really successful, some of them embraced it, some of them haven't. The honest truth is Facebook back in 2018 told you what we need that they want to see from you and those have those principles have not changed. It is doubling down on the data. So the Power Five and CBO. Now the difference between the first wave of the Pixel event versus the Power Five and CBO is many people were able to thrive even rejecting Power Five and CBO because the Facebook platform was really smart and the attention was underpriced. And because the penalty for rejecting their objectives wasn't high enough to really be an issue. Plus people got really, really good at their business model. And we had a huge surge forward in MRR, monthly reoccurring revenue models, subscription models. And even with rising costs on the platform where CPMs may have gone from eight to 10 bucks to 10 to 15, 
over that time, we were still able to see a lot of people be successful because the business model growth, the integrity of a business model and the overall general knowledge outpaced the rising cost on the platform. And you have so, so many people that are now in the world that got started around 2018 and 2019. And why? It's because Facebook's implementation of the Power 5 on the back end, as well as teaching you how to use it, created so much opportunity for individuals that you were able to do things that you were never able to do before. And you were able to thrive on this environment of high data. And really, it was just Facebook saying, we have all this information because our pixels on millions of websites and we can see people on multiple platforms that control this user experience. How do we consolidate all of that data into a place to make dynamic decisions so that you don't have to work nearly as hard and we can better use your resources to give our customers a positive user experience. And as a result of that, we can now deliver you a more consistent result that you can have more trust in and the folks that embraced it were massively successful you know when you're talking to people online that are spending 10 20 30 thousand dollars a day fifty thousand dollars a day they have way more in line of working on their business model and keeping facebook simple than they do of hacking the shit out of it now i know a lot of people that are still spending 20 30 50 thousand dollars a day that hack the shit out of facebook but because their business model is so fucking good and their customer service is such a high priority and because they're still able to make things work even at that extremely high level of touch that's required to manage that where you are at best guessing in a reactionary version you are a professional gambler and you are able to make it work they're still successful they're going to see their margin for success get worse and worse and the fun thing is the folks we talked about that are selling you these courses and these these ebooks and these you know premium Slack channels where you just you know you, you spend a whole bunch of money to sit and talk to the people you would have talked to for free anyway and then get advice from overworked, poorly trained and underpaid individuals in their mid twenties that have never solved business problems like the one you're having right now. They're even saying that yeah, you have to embrace broad. This is the future. This is all that you need to do because we don't even have a choice. But they're still selling you the $100, $1,000 solution that completely says the exact opposite because they're low integrity players that don't give a fuck about your success. And that's a really big point. If you're listening to somebody that doesn't care about your success, understand that when you're unsuccessful, they don't give a shit. And they're not going to be there to answer your questions or offer support or teach you the fundamentals around the system and the process so that you can see stability and success long term. Those people are liabilities to your happiness and to your success. And I highly recommend that if you are currently working with them or you're on version five or version 10 of going to the same agencies or gurus or experts or courses or listening to the same talking heads of people that spend as much time complaining as they do saying they found the new greatest hack. I highly recommend that you abandon that as an ongoing evergreen strategy for your business because they don't give a fuck about you. They don't know what they're talking about and they are at best reactionary to what they were taught because here's the flow. The disruptor group did things back in 2017, 2018. We built case studies built on hundreds of millions of dollars of spend across verticals all over the world and in millions of different types of customers. Those case studies were then taught. Now, some of them people adopted, some of them they didn't. Some things people understood, some they didn't. Now, some people were successful and they were like, I'm not going to even try to embrace this stuff. Fuck you, I don't need it. So what ended up happening was a lot of these talking heads that got really popular between 2015 and 2018 never preached it because it was a direct threat to their business model that they had already established. We already have a system that makes money. We don't need to be uncomfortable. We don't need to prioritize growth and being uncomfortable and success because we already have something that works. And we can blame the uh, platform. We can say, well, Facebook is the reason that there is problems. And Ultimately, Facebook isn't the reason you have problems. Facebook is the reason you have the luxury of even having the opportunity to have that problem. And your rejection and disrespect for your customer and for the partner is why you're struggling. Now, I'm not saying that you are purposely trying to be disrespectful to Facebook or to your customers. I'm saying that you've been taught low integrity strategies by these low integrity players that honestly don't give a damn about you and are spending way more time managing the business. And they're very successful at that. They're growing big teams and they're traveling across the world, getting people hyped. And that's great. I would absolutely trust my business if my business was growth and, and excitement to them. But I would never, ever let them actually touch the ad account 
and be in charge or take anything that they said as having any merit when it comes to the success of my million dollar baby because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about and they're not doing the work. Never trust your future success to somebody that has no innate skill in what it is that you're asking them to do. But we see so many people giving hundreds or thousands of dollars to every single next person on the block that's got a really bright idea. But that really bright idea is how can we learn from everybody else that doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about? Because all of these people came from a place of rejecting what they were supposed to do. Now, I'm not saying that everybody has. We are seeing it. We are seeing people say, well, look, uh, well, we can't rely on 28 day click and one day view anymore. So maybe what we need to do is start worrying about, you know, MER, which MER, great measurement. It's about three years old and what you should be doing. We really should be talking about blended CPA across AOV and LTV, but that's fine. That's another question for another day. But the point is people are being forced because the opportunity to teach bad and low integrity solutions doesn't work anymore. If you notice, we're not seeing big conversations around Black Friday this year around delayed attribution, what it's going to look like in 28 days, because they can't tell that lie. That institutional low integrity data point has been removed as an option. And so the thing that for the last several years was always the big hub of around this time of year isn't even being mentioned anymore. We're not talking about what the 28 day lift on your Black Friday campaign is going to be because we can't tell that lie anymore, regardless of the data point you're bringing. Now, you could theoretically still model that out, but you're not seeing people do it. And I can't tell you how many folks I saw that just said, well, swore up and down, left, right, and center about the value of that thing, but because they can't tell that lie anymore, because that lie isn't an available option, they might not even appreciate that that is something that is absolute bullshit. And many of them don't. They literally don't understand it, even though the writing is on the wall as to why their myopic view of performance is not something that you can build your success upon. It's not being taught because that option isn't available. And when interest groups right now, expanding your interest group is, is, is not even a choice anymore. When you pay extra to target an interest group, you are going broad anyway. You're just paying extra to do it. So you should just abandon it. At some point, you're going to have to. But this is the type of thing that we're getting at here. And what I really want to talk about more than anything is what is the Power 5? Let's get into that for a second. Now, Facebook launched the Power 5 tools to help marketers better use the machine learning to drive better business results. And that machine learning is all the stuff that we talked about from the Facebook pixel and the conversion optimizations, the OCPM environment. And this is where we get auto advanced matching and CBO, this simplified account structure, automatic placements and dynamic ads. If you're not implementing those as core elements of your strategy moving forward, what you are doing is you are putting your, your business at risk. You are saying, this is what Facebook says I should do. Let's, let's not even use the word Facebook. Let's say, let's use broader terms. My business partner says they need this from me. And that this is how their business is designed to succeed. And this is what my customers who they have access to want to see. I'm going to say, fuck you. Because some stranger on the internet got me really hyped about something that they're not going to explain to me and I can get no support in. And because if I work really, really hard, I can get close to what I want to do. And so I'd rather have an unsustainable thing because I got a million other friends that are also seeing the same struggles. And I'd rather be in the struggle with other people than embrace the uncomfortableness and grow. Now, I'm not saying that's where you're coming from, but I'm saying that is the overall collective mindset moving forward. Now, the happy outcome of black, of, um, of the Power Five was that the algo just got so much stronger and so much better. The implementation of all of these things made it so good. And the strength of that algorithm and the ability of this for there to be stability and scalability of resources grew faster than the base rate of inflation on CPM based around supply and demand. So the algo, the update that happened around Power Five quite legitimately tripled the amount of media buyers in the space. The thing that to this day, people are still fighting and saying, no, you don't, you shouldn't do auto placement. You should make ads just for Instagram. And we don't use CBO and we're not using dynamic ads. And we don't even know what advanced matching is. And we don't have a simplified account structure. All of these things that are, that tripled the amount of volume of buyers in the space and gave 150% lift to the market share of Facebook ad spend and fundamentally changed the landscape is still things that people are fighting today. 
still thinks that the, some of the most well-respected individuals because apparently longevity has any impact on legitimacy. There are a lot of people that have been around forever that are complete fucking scam artists and people still spend a bunch of money with them. Doesn't mean it's any good just because you've been around for a long time. And if you can point to a couple success stories, great. How many of those success stories are because of the work that you've done? Not because of a contract you signed when somebody didn't need you. And that's a really, really, really big difference. And for the record, what it's worth for me, I have repeatedly grown brands from seven to eight figures for years. And you can see my receipts if you want to on all of that stuff. I've been attached to these brands and I've been brought in to help folks see success, whether it's an 8 million to 95 million growth or a 3 million to a 25 million growth, whether we're taking an ad account from 3,000 a day to $50,000 a day. I've done it repeatedly across multiple verticals, across multiple business models, whether it's direct to consumer, weight loss, beauty, hair care, um, you know, insurance, SaaS companies. Uh, this is, this is, you know, it doesn't matter. If your business model is successful and you understand how the system works because you pay attention to what your business partner wants, then you're going to be successful. It's like having a marriage and every time your partner asks you for something and tells you what they want, your response is, fuck you, I know better. It's not going to work out. Why would you think that anything would be different right now for your business, for your future, for your dream inside the Facebook environment? That is an extremely, like, it doesn't make any sense. And is an extremely high risk to your future success. And all the people preaching against it are, over the last year, embracing more and more of what we've been talking about. Now, I've been preaching this stuff since 2017, 2018. I've been hated on by a lot of the folks where, like, for instance, you've got the Savannah Sanchez's of the world block me on every single platform. And then if you look back, there's a video from Shopify in 2018 where I was sitting in a room with Common Thread Collective and Shopify LA, Common Thread Collective, Nick Shackelford, and Savannah Sanchez. They gave a strategy. I quoted where they came from. I told them why it was wrong. I gave them three. I gave them a step-by-step -step process uh, on how they could do things better using Facebook Messenger. And they then flipped the camera on me, made me repeat that entire process, offered me a job on the spot, and I turned them down. And they basically, from that point on, I got blocked by Savannah on all social media things. I saw some case studies citing that exact same strategy preached the very next year. And then kind of abandoned because it's a lot harder to teach those things. And also there's a split up among the hierarchy there and there's a whole other thing. But the point is, people don't want to be uncomfortable. People don't want to have to evolve. People don't want to have to do these things, especially if they're successful in spite of it. Now, one of the side effects from this second purge that we saw with the Power 5 and CBO was that a lot of folks who embraced the pixel became very successful. And as they grew, they moved away from the execution and growth that made them successful, which means they're no longer the people that are dynamically getting better. They're now the team, the people that grew so successful and so big that they now have to manage teams, but they stopped evolving. They matured to a point where they're no longer getting better. They're getting bigger and they're dying. They're getting bigger and bigger and falling farther and farther behind. And that is something that we see with every business model. At some point, you stop being innovative, you stop growing, you start expanding, and you fall further and further behind the cutting edge of things. And ultimately, somebody else who's scrappier, smarter, and more motivated than you puts you out of business. Facebook is now at the spot where saying, if you are this old dinosaur that is still preaching to use ABO and interest groups and avoid dynamic ads and aren't using auto placement and trying to force things with retargeting and, and, and traffic campaigns and engagement and all of this stuff. We're not going to let you advertise on our platform because you're a liability to our success. Now, if you still want to spend money, great. We're just going to charge you 30, 50, hundred dollar CPMs until it becomes so financially unviable for you to actually work with us that you go away. And then what happens every single time is the, the opportunity skyrockets because there's only good players in the market. And if there's only good players in the market and everybody's evolving, everybody's learning from each other, everybody's getting better and better and better, we see a massive push forward. And ultimately what happened is because the lever people made it easier and easier for people to succeed, even when leaning on old strategies, but the leverage that they had when leaning on old strategies shrunk every, every year. And it made it harder and harder for people to succeed. How many people do you know that have been in the business forever that are saying Facebook doesn't work anymore, it's highly unstable, and going to five different platforms? How many people are saying, well, you know, this is the next hack. This is the next audience. This is the next strategy. We're doing X, Y, and Z. When somebody says, this is what's working on Facebook today, what they mean is 
we haven't paid attention for years. This is the latest pit, bit that we got lucky in. See if you can copy us and repeat it. And you might be successful, you might not. But it generally has way more to do with the fact that you're changing streams. You're not just, you're, you're providing a new opportunity. And Facebook wants you to be successful. So they're going to give you as much opportunity, as much rope to be successful as you can. So you're going to see wins, which is why when you try some new thing, it might work for three days or seven days or like a week and a half or something, but ultimately it dies. And then you're constantly like cycling through all of these strategies of things that may or may not work. And it's because Facebook is trying to give you the opportunity to be successful. But ultimately, if you're not meeting their business objectives, you are going to die. That's why you know, when we see, well, this is the new audience to target, or we're going to go cost cap here, or those other things, you're going to see success for a few days. But if your entire business model is predicated on you being successful every couple of days, because you're going to try to constantly shift and constantly work, what it means is you're never going to be able to take a vacation. You're going to see lower and lower profit margin on your efforts. It's going to be more and more difficult for you to even advertise on the platform. And eventually you're going to have to abandon it because instead of prioritizing learning what the platform wanted, being uncomfortable and getting a little bit better every single week until the point where your biggest liability was that you don't have a large enough credit line to spend as much money as you should, you instead of about prioritize, I'm going to micromanage every employee that I have and I'm going to be in charge of everything. And as long as I'm right more often than I'm wrong, I'm going to still be able to keep the lights on. That is an unsustainable model that will lead to your death. And it's getting to the point where you won't even have the choice to do it because Facebook is trying to help you prevent from killing yourself. But both of these events between the implementation of the conversion event and the Power Five presented a massive opportunity that was previously unparalleled in Facebook's success for people around the world. And that became a direct threat to those that refused to embrace change and ultimately resulted in their abandonment of Facebook ads entirely. You know, there were more than a few agencies that their entire business model was low funnel retargeting and trying to go after these um, opportunities. And, and they had this great strength and all of their data and they were buying things from people. But if you notice, especially been in the business for a while, they're not in business anymore. They don't even exist. You know, there was one agency where sadly 2000 people lost their jobs because that, uh, that agency ultimately had to fold their performance marketing division because their entire business model was predicated on disrespecting Facebook. And ultimately people realized that I don't even need you and that you're not helpful for me. Advertisers became sophisticated enough to understand that this low integrity player was a liability to their success and they had to go out of business. But at the same time, thousands and thousands of people are able to make that $10,000 a month you know, whatever, or that million dollar a year uh, income for themselves or their businesses by providing opportunity. So as people reject things, the folks that embrace it or literally just come on board and don't realize that what they should be rejecting is, is even an option. The, the ignorance of a new of youth coming in and just preventing like, well, well this is what I'm supposed to do. Why am I going to do this thing that, that these old people say that I should be doing when, when clearly it's a liability and I'm successful without it? We're in the third phase of that now. And this is where we get to AEM and iOS as a result of iOS 14 and what will happen next year, the deprecation of the cookie. What are we seeing then? We're seeing crippling instability for folks who didn't embrace the power five and a desperate resurgence of old ideas in 2015, like interest groups and people. And I see it all the time and people, you know, they're not buying. They're saying, well, you know, I, I'm not, I, I know that I'm supposed to go broad, but it doesn't work for me. So I'm just investing, you know, all my efforts in interest groups and doing ABO. And I'm just doubling down on all my workload because Facebook's not really stable and I need to do more and more. What they're doing is saying, I'm unwilling to shift my mentality and invest in my future success. And instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double down on the thing that is killing me because I'm still able to see success with it. I'm still able to see profit with it. it, it it's like an oil company as, as, as you know, the, it's like why we have fracking instead of just you know, drilling for gas. At, at some point, we know this business model works. We know that our time is running out. And we know that it's getting more and more difficult. So we'll just get more and more desperate. We'll get more and more scrappy. Instead of being uncomfortable and growing, you're actually increasing the rate of your own death and depreciation by leaning into more and more of what is actually killing you. 
And to be fair, these folks basically won't even have a choice in the next few months. You're not even going to be able to do the things that are crippling you. Just like back in 2015, when we introduced the new Facebook pixel and the optimized CPM environment and the conversion events, you eventually were unable to use the old pixel. Facebook just stopped supporting you. And as a result, so many people threw up their hands and said, this is completely fucking useless. We can't possibly do this. The costs are too high. We're never going to do it. Sound familiar? But we also seen so many people that are massively successful today weren't even around then. And some more success than people were seeing back then. Because it's easier and easier and easier to be successful if your business model is good and you respect your customer. So ultimately, what are we getting into is we have this big resurgence of ideas that get short wins, but they're not evergreen. If the system requires you to do a lot of work and to put your effort forward and it relies on you being right when you're making educated guesses to work harder and harder and harder to fight rising costs and instability. At some point, you are an instrument of your own demise. You are going to be the reason that you are unsuccessful. And it's not really something that's up for debate. It's just a matter of time. The end result is hacking Facebook. Let me put it this way. The end result of you hacking Facebook is simple. This is a pattern that has been repeated twice before. And the resistance to adapt has yet to be good for business. Every time so far, Facebook has communicated the path forward and, be, and based on extensive testing from elite partners like, like me and, and a lot of other people who I'm not going to name drop all the other individuals because I'm not going to put anybody on blast that is an integrity player. I'll gladly call out the low integrity players. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to hack Facebook, at the end of the day, if you're still making Instagram ads and using interest groups and avoiding dynamic creative and dynamic ads and you haven't turned on advanced matching and you're not really prioritizing the user experience of building a better business this is your future and we've seen it before you're going to work harder and harder to get less and less stability chasing short wins to pay off your losses your cpms are going to continue to spike as you present a greater and greater threat to facebook's business model and ultimately You'll abandon Facebook while others see massive success. You are going to be the instrument of your own destruction. That's not a question that's really up for debate because we've seen it happen before. And it's not just something that's happened on Facebook repeatedly. This also happened on Google three times between 20, 2002 and 2012. Google, for what it's worth, has been preaching the dynamic ad functionality before Facebook did. And their, 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 their opportunities are tremendously you know, successful for those that embrace it. At the end of the day, growth and success will come from an appreciation for history paired with a willingness to be uncomfortable. And I'll close it with this, a quote from, um, a quote from the Game of Thrones. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. If you want to be successful, you are going to have to embrace that chaos and use it as an opportunity for you to position yourself better than your competition. You are sitting at a crossroads right now. You can continue to listen to the people that have steered you in the wrong direction. The Titanic is sinking. You can stay on the ship and deny it and you'll die. Or you can hop on the lifeboat and start the rest of your life. That's it. And if you don't know how to do those things, that's fine. There are people out there that are teaching it. I, for instance, I'm teaching that stuff. I've been teaching it for years. My students and clients are seeing scale and growth and success. And I get hit up by people all the time. They're sick and tired of their, you know, common thread collective Slack group. And, you know, the last course that they didn't even pay for from Nick, you know, like they, they got the founder course because it got downloaded and passed around. And, I mean, I mean, if, if your teaching, if, if your one-on-one -on -one relationship with your teacher is something that can be copy and pasted and sent everywhere, that means that that person doesn't give a fuck about you. They've designed their product to be stealable. 
and, and non-dynamic. And they're not going to answer your questions. And they're not going to help you solve your problem and your solution. What they're doing is they're selling you something one inch above where you're currently at that makes them sound smart. And, they're, and they are leveraging their perceived legitimacy based on some of their longevity and their business relationships to take advantage of you. If somebody is not teaching you the systems and process to solve problems at scale and teach you how to problem solve by doing market research and being a good partner to your business partners, then that person is selling you a solution that will ultimately end in your death. And that's a decision that you can make. If you want to learn from me, I'm always open to it. I'm teaching folks. What I teach is called the Facebook Ads MBA program. It is an immersive live coaching experience where we go through many courses. And you get one-on-one -on -one time with me to specifically walk you through all of these lessons and the implementation and the execution and the documentation and ultimately how to solve your business structures so that you don't even need Facebook to be nearly as successful. If you can stop worrying about the day to day of things you can't control and you can start setting your systems up to live without you and you can work on things that will ultimately solve problems that are preventing you from having million dollar issues instead of thousand dollar issues, then you're going to be in a great place. Do not focus on the small shit. Stop sweating the small stuff. You're never going to move mountains if you're worrying about the pebbles in front of you. So that, I hope you're all doing well. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it, whether you're here on Instagram or on Facebook or YouTube or, or Twitter. If you're sick and tired of spending your money elsewhere and hearing the same damn thing from the same damn people and you are willing to invest in being uncomfortable and maybe actually not being successful on day three because what you see for the next year is far more important. If you don't want to be at the top of the crowd as the, sink ship, as the ship sinks and said you just want to hop on the lifeboat, let me know. That's what I'm here for. Until then, I'll see you all, and best of luck to you out there. Um, it's a hard world, but it doesn't have to be. And if you are motivated and ready to make a change and invest the next few weeks or months of your life to make a better next few years for your family and for your business and for your dream, I'm here for that. Because my why is your success. Until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.